the uh, latest rumor I heard. <clears throat> no, but you need to. No more smoking butts? Yeah, just the next time you're at City City Hall, ask about that. So what you, so there's no like um pork butt sale for the fire fireworks? How are we gonna pay for fireworks? I don't know. Maybe and That's, we're live. And we're live oh. coming at you on the Book of Faces, uh, where we're going to discuss, among other matters, uh well, really your thoughts on stuff from the last week and a half yeah. um the the people's as i should say uh our big topic talking a little bit about valparaiso they have a big budget meeting tonight that is yeah. going to be i think probably pretty deeply uncomfortable for a lot of people um <clears throat> and then coming up we have uh, a couple of things that are coming up this week that we're going to talk to you about uh, i think it's going to be worthwhile for you guys to know about uh these things ahead of time just so that you know you know what to do with them when we get uh, results on them and you see the stories later in the week you're a little bit more informed and so comments first. comment section check out my new nifty fun graphics that i can do um this is from <clears throat> that's just a shadow of me it's supposed to be live but facebook's not really good at thumbnails yeah. and so um <clears throat> ignore ignore my shadow and instead look at the comment where it says we're eagles but my favorite besides our band is theirs they brought it awesome this dance too this of course is crestview, crestview high school's big red machine of which i had never actually seen live and in person in crestview They've come down here, uh, but it is a really amazing experience and a sight to behold. I mean, there's you know 250 of them. Uh, I would say if if they're not the best band in the county yeah. and it's Niceville, they're the second best. Um, unfortunately for Crestview, they did yeah. fall 35-14 that in that L. game. They took a big L, and I I will. People noted that I had said some stuff about how I thought that maybe Crestview would be a tougher opponent than they were. And I was wrong. And I am, I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. Here's one of those times I was wrong. And uh, they weren't as good as I, they weren't as good as they thought they were. Yeah. Um, but the, Ch the Choctaw Crestview game is close, right? It was close. And Choctaw just lost to Pine Force this weekend. Yeah. And, and so, now they're going to take an L this got, upcoming week. Too, guys, so. Niceville is for real. Niceville is going to beat them too, I think. Niceville is like for real, for real. It's uh, now, you know, it, the more we talk about it, I mean, I, I can pull up another comment from uh, this same post because I think it was worthwhile. And here we'll pull it up. And it says, I love it. I am NHS 87 band alumnus. Best times ever. And those kids do have a great time out there on the field. But also um, I've gotten to do some stories with them as they prepare for the Rose Parade, stuff like that. They just have a really great time together. And I think that's a cool thing. Yeah, the band is, is awesome. We, we talked about that last week. Yes. Anyway, band, still cool, still awesome. Next comment, What's the Next comment is, um, I think the one that you're going to enjoy the most because it involves the University of Florida's Gators. Oh, yes, I remember this story. Yes. So this is, uh, yeah, the University of Florida has the number one selling uh, custom college license plate. It's not even close. Yeah. It's not even remotely close. It is... Uh, by a wide margin, though I will say until you hit, um, oh gosh, Jefferson County, yeah, uh, to just to the east of uh, Tallahassee, uh, it's all Florida State up here, which I mean I guess makes sense, right? Uh, there's no Alabama seen, license plate on sale yet here, so a lot less uh, Florida State paraphernalia in the last I don't know maybe one more win. So it's <laughs> no, it's uh, God hates ugly, and I guess that means that God hates the state of Florida's college football. Uh, it's been it's not been great, boys and girls. I guess it's Miami's turn. Let, let's wait until the end of September. They'll inevitably collapse. All right, because they don't have the swag. They don't have the swag. Anyway, uh, moving on from that, the, the last one that we have for today comes to us from a story I wrote about Valparaiso and their budget crisis, which we're going to cover in depth. I um, wish there was a sound effect button. We're working. That that'll have to be something that we get in uh, season three. Yeah. But the uh, Valparaiso City Commission has a lot of hard decisions to make because ultimately they um, are they have an eleven million dollar budget for the whole city. Yeah. And uh, the city manager from Niceville came over and said, "Hey, we need one point four million dollars more uh, for our fire department give to give us to to make this work." And they do not know what to do. And one of their options right. is to raise taxes, but they'd have to send out a mailer, and that's a huge amount of money. And they have to tell everybody, "Oops, we got to raise your taxes last minute." Sorry about that. Do they not have the same amount of reserves? I mean, what kind of reserves? <clears throat> nah, they're, they're, it's not significant. I mean, it's just a much smaller town. Uh, but all that to say, we had a comment that says, "Does Val P Police really need to be running radar on 85 outside of town?" And I would say, with the budget situation, maybe. <laughs> they absolutely. <laughs> they need to uh, triple down on it. So, uh, I mean, look, revenue generation is revenue generation. It's going to take a lot of uncomfortableness 
for them to recover. And uh, I don't know what the plan is. I'd be interested to see your story after tonight. Um, but if the taxes go up and they're already higher than nice, Nicevilles, they're they've doubled in the last twenty years their tax rate. If they're already high. Yeah, they're already higher than Nicevilles. Uh Maybe people will stop, you know, <laughs> wanting to be independent. Maybe they would like to be folded underneath uh, Niceville. Yeah, and we I don't know. here at Mid Bay News, we don't we try not to be too. Uh, Op ed though I, I say that as we've written our first op-ed. But um I, I'm allowed to say stuff. Oh no, no, but I'm gonna I'm about to back you up, homeboy. Okay. Right. Um so I I don't know how many times I've said this and I feel like I'm bragging at this point, but I wrote a, a master's thesis on on whether or not the cities of nice film operators should merge. And I know you guys are gonna be surprised by this, but I said that they should. And it's because of the cost savings and the economies of yeah. scale that I remembered there how to go. say this time. Um that basically come from merging two cities that are right next to each other. Um, we already merge uh, in some ways, some services fires, not exactly merged in the, in the classic sense, but they are unified. Um, and so they borrow each other's equipment all the time. Exactly. We're all going to the same schools. We're all going to the same restaurants. Uh, I mean, big people in blue water Bay already think they're in Niceville. The only reason Val P that, you know, is because they have their own uh, pride to get involved. Yeah. I mean, if if all three jurisdictions were to come together, it would be much much easier and cheaper. To, well, not not only budgetary, but you can now go to the state legislature and you can ask for stuff, right? Like, you want more ball fields? Like, you can go to the state legislature and say, "Listen, we got this whole wide area that's now being serviced under one umbrella. You know, give us some more money so that we can put ball fields and other things in." Yeah, because if you have, I mean, so if you're Pat Maney, right? You're the state rep. Yeah. And you're getting, you know, fielding calls from the county yeah. commissioners and the city councils of both the city council of Niceville and the city commission of Valparaiso and all these other interest groups. And then all of a sudden now you're getting one call from one person that represents 50,000 people. You can keep your head straight. Val P should really check their ego a bit. Be open to the idea of merging uh, with the understanding that some of their folks can be on our board or vice versa mm -hmm. for voting power. And let's figure out a way to lower your taxes you can still keep all those good things that you already have in Val P. You can even keep the name. It doesn't matter. But lower your own taxes and do the right thing. Um, I, I don't know. It, I think it would take a lot to do it from what I've heard. Um, but I think it's a no-brainer at this point, especially if, if they can't turn their budget around in the next you know, 24 to 36 months. Yeah, and I would say to you, there is, there is a somewhat convoluted process, but it involves basically – uh, unincorporating in Val P and then Val P's former residents and Niceville's current residents voting to bring those people in yeah. uh, to the city. And then that, that's the easiest way to do it without having the state legislature get involved. Um, you can have a merger and they did it back in the seventies with a bunch of cities that became Panama city beach. Um, and so I don't know because I see our, our, see our stuff's going right now. So we're good to go. I guess I'll just pull my handy daddy headset out. And make sure that we're good. So make sure Barbara is. You can't be spitting all this goodness if people I, can't hear us. I'm telling you. One, two. Yeah, no, we're on. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Sorry, Barbara. Sorry, Barbara. Uh, check your sound settings and make sure you're good to go. Um, but uh, on our end, we're looking we're looking like we got sound. Um, so, so we're good. Yeah. Uh, that's, right, we'll just keep going. We'll keep going. Anyway, uh, that is ultimately what we're going to have to make a decision about, right, is – um, are we going to keep the separation going to our detriment because it's what we've done, or are we going to make a, a concerted effort to merge? Um, and I think that there are concessions that the city of Niceville's residents are going to have to put up with in order to make it palatable for Valparaiso. Yeah. Um, you can't just say like, you're now part of us and now you have to play by our rules. Right. I think if you don't give the city of Valparaiso agency, and I think this is actually a great chance for us to... Oh, she can hear us now. Good. Um, <clears throat> for us to put out an olive branch and say, look, yep. um, not only do we want you, but we also realize that our the way that we do city council. So Niceville City Council does everything at large. Right. Right. So everybody can run for every seat and everybody right. can vote for every seat. But if we give this opportunity um, a little more wiggle room, we say, OK, we're going to have people represent certain areas of town. Yeah. That way we guarantee that Valparaiso has proportional representation. And they have a say in what goes on in their new town. I, I find that hard to reject. I know. I, I think there's going to be a an outpouring of Val P people who um, are just going to ask for the budget to be tightened 
and you know it's just going to be a slower slower death and i i get the the budget titan onus like people wanting to do that because taxes again have been doubled the tax rate in valparaiso has been doubled yeah. over the last 20 years and people had to pay a lot more than they used to for the same level of services yeah. and that's got to be really frustrating for somebody that's lived there for 50 years and that's yeah. what they're talking about doing just to cover the fire department that's what they'll need to cover the fire department costs wow. and so i am i am hopeful that people will see this and either get mad at us or mad at somebody else um, and start having a conversation about what needs to be done because continuing to raise the millage rate and continuing to put this problem off is only going to make stuff worse. And I, I wonder if there's anybody on the Val P side who would stand up and publicly say <clears throat> that they're interested in this. I, I've had one and a half commissioners tell me that they would be interested in this. The other three and a half are, I would say, solidly against it. And, you know, their points are, you know, we know what's best, you know, locally, the local government closest to home is best. And I think that there, there's a point to that, but, you and know. There's a point to that when it's half a mile. I mean, there's yeah. parts of, I mean, I don't know, there's parts of Kelly Mill Road that are like half, half Niceville. Exactly. And there's same thing on Johnson or on um, not Johnson Street, but on government. Yeah. So, I, I mean, ultimately, I think people know where we stand on this. Uh, we'd love yeah. to hear from you guys. What do you like about the potential for a merger other than the fact that it might save inevitable financial crisis every couple of years? Um, what do you not like? What do you need to see in order to make a decision? I think that's ultimately where we're going to get people to have real hard yeah, discussions. Don't, don't say no to it. Just give us a brainstorm <laughs> of what you would want to see happen or tell us why you say no yeah. i think because i would love to start researching and putting more information into people's hands and if niceville promised to lower the millage rate to what niceville's was on in year one would well, they a, would they would automatically do that would that be enough to you know i mean if you get a 600 hundred dollar rebate on your taxes would that be enough for you to be happy we could still call you val p yeah we could call it old val p or val you p could still have all your stuff that you have now yeah but anyway, that budget. that is our big topic discussion today. And as always, we want your comments on this. We want to know what yeah. you think about all of this because ultimately it doesn't matter what the two of us think if nobody else is going to go along with it. Um, and we want to have a conversation. We want people to tell us why we're wrong because that's the best way to have a conversation start. So tell us why we're wrong if you uh, feel that we're wrong. Tell us why we're partially right if you feel we're partially right. Tell us. Tell us what you're thinking, because I think having a conversation about this is probably the best way to come up with a solution that works somewhat for most people. Give me back. Yeah, I'll get you, dog. If you're in Val P and you live there and you're interested in knowing more about merging in with Niceville and what that might mean for you, or you're, or you're already on board with the idea, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, absolutely. And so moving on, uh, <clears throat> a couple of things coming out um, this week. Uh, I believe later today, if it hasn't dropped already, um, our first uh, opinion editorial op-ed nice. is going to drop uh, specifically about a uh, new county commissioner that we have here in Okaloosa County. Sherry Cox, of course, won that very close, very close race. Um, race. 14 votes, I believe, was the final number of uh, – or final difference between her and her second-place competitor – um, and we have not, we got a brief interview. Somebody wrote an article for us about 18 months ago, yeah. um, about Mrs. Cox ideas. And it was, you know, very cursory, very open look. Sure. Um, but in that time we've had of all the 14 or so candidates that have come out on, uh, this last cycle of primary elections, every single one of them interviewed with us. Uh, except for Mrs. Cox. And it's not so much that she didn't interview with us like boohoo. What was me? No one cares. What's important to me is that nobody really knows what her policy prerogatives are, um, and she has yet to give anybody an interview to kind of explain what she wants to do with the power that she's just received. And so, when does she get sworn in? She gets sworn in November, okay. and okay. so um, she, you know, she has several months to get ready for this position. But I would encourage her, uh, as I as I say in the op-ed, I would encourage her to speak to somebody and explain her platform or put something more concrete about her policy proposals because i'm getting questions about what she wants to do and i don't have an answer um and sure. so it is my it it's i beseech her to uh start putting stuff out uh concrete policy proposals um 
talk to somebody, talk to channel three, talk to mid Bay news, talk to get the coast. I don't really care. Um, I just, I think it's really important that people know what you want to do so that they can figure out how to support you best. Because ultimately Sherry Cox is the commissioner elect and anybody that loves Okaloosa County wants her to succeed. That's right. And I, Absolutely. I want you to succeed Sherry. So I'm, I'm hopeful that you will give us some idea of what you want to do and what your motivations are or what you want to fix first. What's the closest alligator to the boat for you so that we can help you? Ultimately, we all have to live here together, and I I am hoping and rooting for your success. Sweet. So outside of that, what's up with the commission? Um, over there, they're having uh, one of their regular commission meetings tomorrow. First thing on the list, uh, what's called the consent agenda, is the yeah. stuff that pretty much they're going to approve all at once so they don't have to sit there all day. Um, yes, for, uh, I don't think it's such a bad idea. First thing on there, 50,000 donation from Jay Odom uh, to what's called the Bridge to Bridge Initiative. So uh, well big done, ups to Jay. him. Um, the, the Bridge to Bridge Initiative uh, is basically a multi-use pathway uh, from across yeah across Oklahoma Island. So yeah. biking and running, uh, it's, it's really the brainchild of uh, Commissioner Carolyn Ketchell. Um, she had a, um, I, I believe, a brother that passed away in a car bicycle accident. So she's really passionate about this kind of stuff. Um, and so she's worked on this for, gosh, I mean, I was at the county when she started it. So it's been five or six years to get this thing to fruition. So big ups to Jay for supporting this project and big ups to Carolyn for making it happen. And to all those out there who hate developers, this is an example of a developer doing something nice for the yeah. community besides building the homes that many of you live in. Yeah, well, it really sucks when people that work in the county ha also get to live here. Anyway, um, the uh, next thing up, Shoal River Ranch. This is a huge ticket item in the neighborhood of $41.5 yeah. million dollars is going to build a water reclamation facility up at the Shore River Ranch, which is ostensibly supposed to be a, what they're calling a gigasite. It used to be called a megasite. Now it's a gigasite. Yeah. And it is to bring in, you know, heavy industry. Um, so, so the thought is, is that will just serve the ranch? No. So it'll, it'll serve the North end as I understand okay, it. it. Um, but it's, well, yeah, so it's, it's going to be a huge facility. It's going to make water, uh, non-potable water, a lot more affordable. So stuff like uh, like here in the east side of Niceville, we don't have reclaimed water right now. And so water right. bills are much higher than they are on the west side. Because lots of people use their water to water their lawn. Exactly. And so I'm using drinking water right now to water my lawn, which uh, I wouldn't do it if there wasn't an HOA fine. I'd just let it die. I'm going to be real honest with you. Anyway, <clears throat> sorry, neighbors. Uh, put in fake grass, right? Uh, nope, nope. That's, that. that's against the rules because fake grass is wrong. Anyway. The county is going to buy 300 acres of land near the Baker landfill. Ooh, Do you want to what? For tourism. Uh, so kind of tourism. Uh, my understanding from just reading. Please say it's to shoot things. I, I hope it is. That wouldn't be fun. Um, it, it's part of their greater north end expansion uh, program uh, for tourism. For what? What's it for? It, it's, it's for tourism. That's what, what it's at. What I, they kind of use it for? So. That is the big TBD? question. It, I, I believe it's TBD. I will put in the show notes if I find something different. Um, but it is it is ostensibly for tourism. And so I am okay. excited to see that one pan out. And then city council uh, last week, something I forgot to mention, but I think is important. A city worker was in the sewer cleaning out sewer pipes because, you know, those uh, so-called uh, you can throw them away. Oh, the disposable wipes, whatever. Brand wipes. Yeah, but or they are dude wipes. Yeah, they're not they're not they're flushable. Not the anyway, they're horrible for it. And they got something stuck. Well, anyway, they got somebody down in there to go yeah. clean it out, and they got stuck with a needle that was for drugs. Oh, no. And so they had to get tested and stuff. Oh, no. And it sounds like from what city manager Deitch said that the individual is gonna be okay. Um, but kind of two big problems oh, here, right? Gosh. Big problem number one, don't flush non flushable wipes. It's a, it's a big frowny face. Yeah. And then um, oh thing number two, don't. Don't put needles. Don't, don't even use needles. I mean. Just drug needles. Yeah. I mean, just, some people have to use needles for. But just suppose, well, even if you do use them for legitimate purposes. You don't flush them. Don't, don't flush them. Um, and so I, I can't believe I forgot to. And I'll probably write something about this tonight just to get it out there. David Dice doesn't get, like, angry very often at City. That. But that, he was. That was, that was Big mad. I get. I guess there's going to be some sort of standard operating procedure that yeah, inside of. I mean, so inside of a dude wipe. Yeah. Anyway, uh, not great. And is that last week's? Yes, council? last Tuesday's. Same same city council meeting with the uh, with the uh, referendum for voting on the abortion. Thing. Yes, indeed. 
we, we do you want to cover it? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know the correct words. But, um, <clears throat> so, but city commissioner, Doug, city councilman Doug Stoffer. So we have city council people in Niceville yeah. and commissioners in Valpy, okay. and it's not at all I confusing ever. Um, but yeah, so he he brought up a um, a resolution, a proposed yeah. resolution. And the Oca and Okaloosa County did this. Yes, and they successfully all voted. But it was basically to vote publicly on where you stand on a state level bill for abortion. And let's give them background on what what's going. Yeah, so <clears throat> so in November. Yeah. In addition to voting for president, and I think we have Marco Rubio's up for re-election and all the other offices that are coming up in the November elections. Uh, yeah. Matt Gates is up for re-election. Um, you have a set of ballot referenda. And yes. so we can change the state constitution in Florida if you have something that gets enough signatures in enough congressional districts to get on the ballot. Yeah. Then once it gets on the ballot, if it gets 60 percent of the voters votes – Right. on that referenda, then it can be added to the Constitution and change the law. And one of them is perceived as a pro-abortion <laughs> Yes, and so the – I'm not going to tell you I have the exact language in front of me, and, uh, no, but, but the, the idea is, is that ref, or Amendment Number 4 – so there's three other ones, um, and we can go into those in a little bit. But the Amendment 4 would um, – essentially right now we have a six-week abortion ban right. in Florida that also – has exceptions for certain carve outs like um, incest or rape or um, health of the mother's life. Right. This would change that rule from six weeks to viability, which I believe is 24 weeks. And that, that number can change if, if, if a fetus sure. becomes viable There's through medicine to 20 weeks, then it would change down to that. Been born at 19 to 20 weeks. <clears> and five. so essentially, uh, this would allow abortion. An extra, what is that? 24 minus 6 is 18, an extra it doesn't matter. The Oakland, three, four months. Oakland. So Robert's, Robert's Rules of Order, right, to give yeah. people a background. Um, anybody can bring something – anybody. Uh, any elected official can bring something in front of their city council, but it can't be up for a discussion or a vote unless there's a second. Yep. And so Doug brought it up as a motion, and he asked for a second to discuss, and it, the other – Everybody was there except for the mayor, but the mayor doesn't get a vote. So the other right. four passed on uh, giving a second to the motion, right. so the motion died. Right. So no, so nobody publicly stated that. Yes. It, which I guess we know where they stand then. I mean, maybe, maybe not. But the and here's here's why I say that. Okay. So I mean, I don't. Well, I first, first of all, kudos to Doug for for bringing it up. So that took guts in itself. So practicing Catholic here, right? Like, yeah. so I, yeah. you guys can make an inference as to what that means. Anyway. <clears throat> the the issue I think that comes up with stuff like this, right? When you have no power over whether or not this thing actually passes, right? Is that you are breaking down coalitions that you need for other things, right? So I don't know. I can't read other people's minds. But if I'm looking at this, yeah. my biggest concern with bringing this up for a second is that I, I gain nothing for the people of Niceville by doing this, comma, but – you also have to make alliances with people that might feel differently and therefore might stand to block you. I, don't, I mean, I get that. I get that. But the city of Niceville, with the way way its constituency is and how the the city tends to vote, uh, it's a very conservative area. Yes. And this is an important topic to lots of people. And when the city council had an opportunity to let its constituency know where it stood, it whiffed on it. I think you I think you make a valid point. I'm not saying that you're wrong. What I'm saying is that I my if I was sitting on the city council, my sure. biggest concern on voting or moving to second this yeah. is that, that that's where my concern would be. Fine, fine, because if you vote if you publicly say one way or the other the city councilman next to you isn't going to vote for you on something else next time, is that what you're saying? I mean, Okaloosa commissioners had no problem doing it. That's true. And I think somebody abstained. Right. Yes. So, so one abstained because he's on the canvassing board. I don't know what that means. Canvassing board is the people that uh, help the supervisor of elections certify elections. And so he said, like, I'm on the canvassing board. I'm going to be counting votes. I can't vote on this. Yeah. Okay. I guess you do have to have a reason to abstain your vote. Yeah. You can't just say I'm you can't just be like, I abstain. Yeah. This isn't Congress. Like <laughs> T tough, uh, <clears throat> tough decision for everybody on the city council. Um, but I do give 
Doug some props for for trying to do. Next that. up, of course, Valparaiso budget meeting tonight. Uh, okay. I imagine it is going to be a difficult one. The thing about these budget meetings that really frustrates me is that there's so much at stake at these. Sometimes I'll be the only person, I'll be sitting next to the people on the planning and zoning board that are always there. You guys are my boys, by the way. Um, <laughs> so Bob Batchelor uh, and his and company and planning and zoning company, thank you for being there. Um, but I mean, there could not be a fire department dedicated to the city of Valparaiso that's not volunteer in three weeks. So oof, think about that. Um, yeah. Finally, you have, I have an update because I was not there, but you were. Oh, sure. Yeah. The, um, the uh, Catholic school meeting, uh, they unveiled the name uh, Holy Family Classical Academy. Um, and it was a really well done presentation by Jeff Witt um, that explained the next steps, what we're doing and how we're how they're going to get there. Um, it was well attended uh, and they raised they raised over eighty thousand dollars. Really? Is, yeah, which is absolutely just great. like in an afternoon. Uh, all they did was pass out note cards and ask for people to pledge. They're not taking donations quite yet, but okay. they they received over eighty thousand dollars in pledges. Not bad for an afternoon. Yeah, not bad at all. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, so you know, um, there's still some hoops to jump through. Sure, but uh, people are excited, and uh, it sounds like it's going to be K through third grade. Oh, okay. So I thought it was going to be K two for some reason. No, K through third is where they're going to start. Now, if they get enough people for fourth and they have a teacher, they would consider probably doing fourth. So did they mention at all how they're going to like recruit teachers and stuff or like where or yeah. when is this going to start? I should they start there. They well thought out committees uh -huh. um, with, in some cases, eight to 12 people on each committee. So there's a lot of volunteer upswell as well. Um, I don't know. It's just it's really cool to see because uh, a lot of people are on board with it. Um, and uh, the facility at Holy Name of Jesus is already built to house it. So yeah. they don't even have to do a capital campaign for that at this point um, to get it started. So, and then they get the 7800 Is it $7,800? Something like that. Some, some non in, – some, in, some significant amount of capital from the state right. per child that goes – instead of going to – right? It does, not, it does not get revectored from public schools. Really? So that. Yeah. Okay. So the, the whole project – oh, I'm blanking on the name of it. I feel terrible. Um, but basically, uh, the state will give you dollars if you your children don't go to public school, maybe okay. private school, um, or even homeschooled. It is that seven eight hundred dollars or eighty three hundred dollars, whatever it is. Um, but it's it's um, privately funded, so it okay. comes from um, it comes from large companies and organizations and nonprofits. And, uh, and that's how it's funded. So do they get like a tax break, the companies? They do. Okay. So that makes sense. Tax break for their donation. I feel like it's, it's been around for a long time. Um, I want to say like seven or eight years or something, and it's just grown and grown and grown. And so they felt confident to move it from needs based last year to everyone who wants it can get it. Uh -huh. Um, so I didn't realize that they had been like growing cash they've, they've been like sitting on a chunk of change or i mean we can do some more research into yeah. it but um that was my understanding uh when i was doing my googling yesterday i didn't realize um, that but yeah it all comes from private funds well there you go That's pretty cool i learned something too yeah i love it so if you're running a multi-million dollar company and you want to donate you can tell the people you heard what i said you you right there with the multi-million dollar company donate Anyway, um, we went way long today. yeah, we did, but it was fun. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. Well, we love y'all. And uh, remember, be nice, nice, Will. Be nice, nice, Will. Bye-bye. I know, man. I'm going to fix it. Jim will fix it.